Welcome back to Julian's Random Projects. I've got another fun set of videos. This time we're going to be messing around with the Schumacher 750 750 watt inverter. It's kind of a I don't know, it's a, it's a di divergence from the normal inverters you see with the extruded aluminum or metal case. This is a plastic case. Um, obviously, consumer grade, cheapy tactile buttons. <clears throat> it's got a USB port, which is probably ha you know, pretty handy for a lot of folks. Uh, well, I mean, why not? It's probably close to free for them to add that in there. Um, this one, like the, uh, the 410 uh, watt models, uh, in some previous videos is all, you know also made by Schumacher and also happens to be a part of a lot that I purchased so on eBay so I've got this one and this one and this one and another one uh, quite a few of these so that helps that helps with redundancy of parts it also allows me uh, you know, if I get one work, if I get a working model or a working version here, it gives me the ability to, uh, you know, check voltages and things that it were supposed to, you know, th from a known good unit, and uh, compare that to a failing unit. Uh, since I don't, I don't have a schematic for this, and I don't know that I would ever care to go digging it up. I might, you know, do some googling, but. Uh, you know the schematics for these are usually closely guarded intellectual property from the manufacturers, so they're, they're hard to come by. Yeah, so I guess this is this first video is an introduction video to, to this guy. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be broken, but it'll also in general be a uh, a guide to working on any kind of electronics, uh, especially broken ones. Uh, I know a lot of folks are intimidated by messing with things. Uh, you need not be, especially with broken stuff, because it's already broken. You're not going to double break it. I promise. And so the uh, the stakes are really low. It's 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 a low barrier of entry to get into electronics if you buy something that's already broken and see if you can fix it. And there's also the satisfaction, uh, especially for beginners, of getting something to work. There's there's a lot of pride in that, um, and it's sort of like a a, a self feeding system um, that really helps anchor it as a hobby. Uh, to a lot of folks, so let's let's get started with this one. Uh, I'll probably fast forward this video just because I know that you know watching a guy take apart a plastic box can be kind of boring. Alright, so you find you find all your screws. Uh, you might, some of you might have noticed I take off these little rubber feet uh, or plastic feet to get at some screws. That's also a common uh, thing in designing products nowadays. They try and hide the screws. I, I mean, I'm not afraid of looking at screws, but I, I like hiding screws. It makes things look prettier. Um, systems. Um, try and Hold on to your screws. A little dish form or something. So let's pop this guy open. Uh, it comes up like this. All the cables here, the bottom, are holding on to it. Or, you know, they obviously they run. Cables have to run up to this seven-segment display here, and these buttons, and in your AC outlets. So when you when I pull this up, I was expecting there to be some sort of uh, daughter card here. Cables. There it is. Uh, so comes that way. Uh, it's got this big plastic piece here, and I don't know if that's for air ventilation or I've also seen this done as a um, insulator for high voltage stuff. The high voltage has a difficult time arcing through this type of material. And so they'll they'll put it over something and you know to, to protect it. Uh, my guess is it's, it's also uh, possible that this is here to help with the um, the airflow to help create a little tunnel to 
for this little for this fan here on the back side this fan to pull or push air through this thing um, I'll set that aside this one, this particular one that I pulled out, pulled out of the bunch, I did so because it looked the newest. It doesn't have any scuff marks where someone was plugging in um, AC plugs. It's also got this little protective thing here. Like it's, you, I don't know if this is a factory reject or uh, a customer return. That looks like something they would have taken off at the factory when they put this in a package. It's still there. Um, so, so picking the cleanest one in a sense sets me up for success I I like to think uh, because it was it was probably some very it, it'll be a glaring problem or it was a problem from day one and that means that it didn't get a lot of use and it, it probably doesn't have a secondary problem it, it's just a single problem uh, at least that's my hope so what I typically do with something like this is give it a good visual inspection so I'm panning it around and we're looking for all sorts of stuff like, um, you know, burnt parts on the circuit boards, um, discoloration of any of the components, and you just start to get an idea of what these things should look like um, just by doing this enough. Uh, one thing I already noticed is that this um, hot lead, the positive coming in, is being pinched here by the case as it gets closed so I'd like to move that over so it's not going to be easy it's a very short length and it's thick so you won't be able to bend it out of the way easily uh, another thing I've noticed there's some glue in this model another one I took apart earlier Oops, uh, doesn't have any that's like um, glue to keep it from backing out and becoming loose or having a loose nut floating around inside of here so that's kind of that's good to see it's Loctite some people in Notice Loctite. There's our culprit. I don't know what it means. Um, I should say I should, I, I'm also looking for um, bulged um, capacitors. Sometimes they'll get overworked and expand. Or another thing that can happen with these is people hook these up backwards and that pops uh, the input capacitors, which are there to help balance out some of the. Um, the current on the on the input. Uh, so, so like I said, I discovered the problem. You won't be able to see it. I might be able to get in here. Let me see if I can get into my iPhone. All right. So, like I said, uh, I found a problem, and let me come in here with a nice light source there, right in the middle. You see these. This set of, uh, res or not resistors, but uh, fuses. They're blown. They should have a filament connecting those two posts in the middle, but it's completely vaporized, as you can see here. It's made out of a metal that'll melt at certain temperatures, and that melting point determines the amount of current that one of these can handle. So you get these from everything from, you know, one or you know, five five amps to in this case 45 amps and then this particular inverter is using two of them together so I'll pull those out and we'll take a look and see if it's both blown or one blown something like that we'll take a look we'll do that with a pair of pliers just Oh yeah, they're def they're both blown. Definitely. So I don't have any 45 amp fuses. The biggest that I've got floating around in my garage here are 30 amps. So we will toss these in here. And see if this guy boots up. Now, I will point out that those fuses blew for a reason. And so if you're fixing something and you know you, you find that the fuse is blown and you just replace the fuse, there's a good chance that it will just pop the moment you plug it in or power it on. 
and uh, so so be ready for that. That's that's you know it, it's doing what it's designed to do, which is which is to to limit current uh, or to destroy itself above a certain current level. And so you, you might have a problem further down the line, you know, some some other place in this circuit board or the uh, circuit board or whatever you're working on and uh, that that problem exhibits itself by popping a fuse and so you just replace the fuse and it pops again and so there, there's some other troubleshooting methods that are outside of the, the scope of this video uh, to start you know isolating those things uh, in, inside the circuit but just know that they pop for a reason I'm hoping it was something simple like this was being tested in the factory and when they uh, you know, we're, we're going to the outer limit to see if it could handle it. it. It popped itself, or they don't have their tests done quite right, and it popped itself. Uh, just noticing the fan. I don't know why, but they've maybe because they were too cheap to cut the wires. They didn't know what to cut the wire lengths to. They just wrapped the fan leads. The wire just get, just bundled it all up over here. It's, you know, there's no reason for that. You could just cut it solder it right in, I mean they did solder it into the board but they probably just didn't have in their process a step to cut those and so they're not um, they won't do it uh, <laughs> factory workers, especially stuff that's made in China it always reminds me of a book I read as a kid called Amelia Bedelia I don't know if anyone's ever read that book but the the main character in the book is like a caretaker for a family or something she's like a maid or a, a babysitter of sorts and at least maybe that was one of the installments of books I read. But point being, her flaw was that she took people literally. And so, you know, if you told her to to make a cake and it involved putting eggs and flour and sugar and water into a bowl, she would just put eggs, whole eggs with the shell and water and flour in a bowl. And then it would, you know, it'd say to mix it and she'd mix it to be egg shells in there. So you had to be very literal with her um, and you couldn't assume that she was you know that she knew certain things and so this reminds me of that kind of thing you know the when they built this in the factory they probably said buy this fan from said vendor install it in here and solder its leads to there you know and, and there, there was no other process to trim them to length and so they just shoved them all over here but if you look closely at these or I'm, I'm observing that they're like pinched by the case so that's not good so we're just continuing to check it over in general, looking for shorts here on the AC side. Um, and charring. Looks pretty good. So, uh, that's it. Let me fast forward to sort of buttoning this back up and giving it a go with our power supply. That might help. Uh, let me toss this guy in frame. In case something catches on fire, we'll know maybe why it caught on fire. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, let's put that there. Um, all right, so we've got 13 volts, zero amps. I'm gonna power this on. I get to press and hold it. I think. Okay, there we go. Uh, showing all eights. Pulling 200. 300 milliamps. It's kind of settling around two and a half. All right. So I'm comfortable with cranking up the current, or at least the amount of current I'll let it have. And we can take something like a light bulb here, plug it in. Hey, -o. nice. So let's pull off that. Current went up a little bit. Now it's pulling like 17 watts, that's about right. This thing's, this LED light's rated for like, or it says it's 14 watts. So that's it. It's pretty good. It's quiet, as in silent. Fan's not even kicking on, which is nice. It probably has some sort of mechanism in here to, to detect the current draw. Um, still says zero here. So I don't know if that's just, that this is so low you know, in the double digits that it can't pick something up, or, or or that could be why you know one of the things that's broken about this guy. Who knows? And if you could, if you couldn't read your wattage, then 
definitely wouldn't know you were overloading it, and then you'd go popping fuses, so that could be a problem. All right, so I think I'll leave the video here. Try and keep it short, I guess. Um, the, the, the other, once I get the other ones that I've uh, got uh, assessed in the same manner as this one, I'll go through and do some stress testing on those and maybe a little a review of this particular branded uh, 750 watt power inverter from Schumacher. Um, but uh, we'll leave it at that and suggest that you come back for another video uh, from Julian's Random Projects. See you later.